Hello guys, can you hear me? Let me just look at the chat here. Okay, good. Still admitting people. Twenty-three people. Anybody still waiting? I think we can uh, we can begin. Oh, there's still somebody waiting. Admit. Were you able to see the playlist uh, where all our um, all our classes are recorded? Good. You can visit uh, and revisit our lectures as you please. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we have 25 people. If somebody's still uh, knocking at the door, I will let them in, so to speak. And we can just uh, uh, now uh, everybody had the um, schedule for today, right? So it's just a half a class. Uh, group A today, section one A for the lab, and uh, we're going to do the PA system. The lab is slightly modified from last year uh, because um, we had to modify this a lot of things to this year, but I'm going to show you uh, all you need to know uh, with this. Uh, admit. All right. Still somebody waiting? We're good. Okay, let's uh, let's begin today's, uh, today's class. We're going to continue um, what uh, we have uh, done. Yes, I mean, uh, last week. This is the slide that we have stopped. And I, I just put this, uh, put things onto the PDF instead of PowerPoint, because uh, this way I can zoom on things, so uh, so you can see things better. Uh, let's just do uh, full view. Okay, that's uh, that should be better. Uh, just in case you don't know, uh, you should see me on the full screen right now. If you don't, just mouse over mouse over my uh, my picture my face you're going to see three dots click on those three dots and choose the option that says pin video and you're going to get me on the big screen 
All right, so we continue with the PA systems and today's lab or this week's lab, lab number two, is going to be that. Uh, we're going to combine that with lab one and I'll show you what I mean uh, once we get to the lab. Uh, it's going to be a tricky thing, but it's doable. All right. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't printed the lab, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you will be able to pull this thing on the screen because everybody has a computer uh, at their workstation. But uh, there's going to be a, a, a demonstration I'll give you. And we'll, con we'll connect some speakers today. All right, so this is what we'll co uh, connect today. That's, going to, that's pretty much going to be our lab. We're going to run the line along the, uh, along the desk or the big countertop that we have. Oh, somebody is still waiting. Admit. Okay, good. Yeah, we got it. Uh, if you're late, you'll be able to see this video uh, on YouTube after this class. Uh, I'm pretty quick with posting those. No editing whatsoever, as it is. Um, unless something sometimes happens, then I have to edit things out. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, um, so we're going to run a main line from the power amplifier feed and we have it somewhere around the middle of the countertop, the big countertop that we have there. We're going to run a line and we're going to bring it to the desks and we're going to connect the speakers. And uh, after we connect those speakers, we will um, play some music through it. Admit. Okay. So... Um, uh, that's what we're going to just uh, as as a review. The, there's a, the constant voltage system is as such. Uh, there is a step up transformer, and sometimes the step up transformer is built in uh, the amplifier, the PA amplifier. And sometimes, if you don't have it, you can buy that transformer uh, uh, separately. Um, so and they come with uh, different versions you can have the you can buy the 25 volt version or you can buy the 70 volt version transformer so um, or some of the transformers are both depending on which wires you use out of them and they're all labeled i will show you all that um, now uh, let's say this is an external um, the external um, transformer so this would be the amplifier output, and usually that would be 8 ohm or 4 ohms. Uh, very rarely 2 ohms, but uh, uh, usually you would be dealing with 8 ohms output on the, on the speaker. That goes to the speaker output, and there's a, that's considered to be low impedance. Now, uh, that's a step-up transformer, yeah? and that, uh, that uh, transforms into the higher impedance as... Uh, um, as we remember from last uh, uh, time and probably from other subjects, transformers transform voltage, transformers transform um, uh, current, and transformers transform impedance. So uh, there are you can you can buy something that's called impedance matching transformers. Uh, what do they keep? They keep the power. They relay the power. So if the voltage goes up on the other side, the current goes down or if the current goes up, then the voltage goes down. Usually you transform, so the voltage goes up, you go higher impedance, because it is easier to transform, to, uh, to relay power when you raise the voltage. You have less losses on the line. I have a higher voltage, lower current, you, get this, you still have the same power on the input of the transformer, and on the output of, of the transformer, you still have the same power here, same power here, except the voltage is higher and the current is lower. Um, so that's uh, that's just to get uh, the, the whole the, the point of this exercise is to uh, um, uh, to minimize the losses on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So um, then uh, all the transformers connect in parallel. So this would be the high impedance because every speaker will have a little tiny transformer. Comparing to that, this is, this will look bigger. And this would look smaller and those transformers are attached to the speaker assemblies and on this side here what is attached to the speaker is a low impedance so there will be like eight ohms 
and 8 ohms in order to uh, to get the maximum power transfer or content transfer you need to match the impedances that's from the other subjects as well and then uh, on the other side is high impedance so this will be a step down transformer because you have higher impedance on the input of the transformer and you're going to have lower impedance on the output of the transformer just to get the speaker what it wants okay? those transformers do have something that's called taps just like tapping uh, so let's say this is the smaller transformer that is on the speaker assembly and there will be constant connection right there uh, so eight ohms that that is connected nothing is being touched so uh, this is connected and stays that way on the other side you can uh, use different tabs depending on how much power you want to push onto the speaker And as a review from last time, uh, usually when you have something like a school PA system or a larger PA system, uh, let a school PA system is one of the most common uh, examples that the full feature of the constant voltage uh, system is being used. Um, <clears throat> in order to balance the volumes, you would usually tap the hallway speakers at one watt because those taps are labeled as wattage. Uh, so the hallway speakers you would tap at one watt and the classroom speakers you would tap at quarter watt this way you have a good volumes balance uh, between the volume that's in the classroom and the volume that's in the hallway if somebody from the main office decides to do an all call page yeah. all right so let's keep going here uh, these are examples of the equipment that uh, you might see in the industry. This type of PA amplifier, it does have the 78 output. Let me see if I can zoom on this thing here. Let's say this is the output of the amplifier. You have a common terminal and over here you can just connect 4 ohm load or you can connect 8 ohm load you can even connect 16 ohms load or you can connect the 70 volt load onto that so we're going to be using the 70 volt load which means this amplifier has a, the uh, step up transformer built in okay. zoom out let me see here there we go this is the speaker station that we're going to use. Uh, it's not very, not very clear. So this is the step down transformer. Oh, somebody's waiting here. Let's just let them in. Uh, welcome, Josh. Admit. Um, okay, now um, this would be considered the step down transformer. It's attached to the speaker. So the low impedance is connected to the uh, to the speaker terminals because the speaker terminal has eight ohm input into it and here are the tabs sometimes you're going to see wires coming out of the transformer uh, and and sometimes you're going to see um, displacement terminals uh, i'll show you examples of both Sometimes you're going to see something that's called a volume control and I will show you how it works, but we will not connect that uh, today in the lab or this week. Uh, sometimes you're going to see paging horns. Paging horns as opposed to speaker. Why would you use, why would you choose one over the other uh, in which situation? Um, well, a paging horn you would use in a situation that, uh, let's say there's a large production hall that you can cut through a lot of noise machinery and whatnot you would install you would choose to install the paging horn um, if you want to just to have a background music or hallway situation when you have a bunch of speakers in the hallways in the ceiling you would uh, choose to have this type of scenario that you would choose the classroom adult classroom see i used to install a lot of those uh, we just keep calling them classroom speakers <laughs> um, uh, there will be those uh, uh, just uh, uh, just the regular speaker assemblies 
and you can uh, you can buy them um, or if somebody is interested in uh, or if you get a job or if you're interested in starting business on your own talk to me I will uh, I'll set you up with distributors names and um, and all that has to do with this type of business uh, so <clears throat> How will we can and sometimes you want to connect a volume control because let's say um, let's say you have um, let's have a scenario that there is a large hallway uh, in whatever facility you would be in and um, you will have some smaller offices so uh, in sm some smaller offices you might want to install a volume control so you would control the volume in that particular room only. Um, I'm going to explain to you how the horn system works. Why would you choose a horn instead of a paging speaker? Let's say you have a large production hall. I'm just going to, um, you know, I'm going to turn the lights off. Let's say you have a large production hall, just like that. Huge. Yeah. Uh, where would you put the uh, where would you put the speakers in this type of uh, scenario? It's, let's say there's a large production hall with lots of machinery, lots of noise. Well, um, depending on how the shelving is done, because sometimes some of the shelving can block the sound, um, and you need to have a PA system in in, uh, in large areas uh, that are production uh, or, or commercial areas for the safety. It's, uh, it's, it's required that you have the PA system. So if somebody says, you know, uh, leave the building because there's a fire or something like that, uh, then uh, you should be able to do that. Um, now, uh, remember when I was talking to you about the uh, sound distribution in the closed rooms, most of the sound that gets to people's ears, it goes from the bouncing uh, of the walls. Now, when you have a production hall, you can't count on the bouncing of the walls to get to do the, the, the sound, uh, the bounces of the walls to get to your ears, uh, because uh, most of the sound that's there is the noise of the machinery. So you're trying to get as much in a straight line as possible, and horns, paging horns, are the best for doing that. Uh, sometimes you might want to choose uh, one central location here, yeah? or sometimes you might want to choose one location. Try to have one location because. If you distribute the horns in a different way, in different uh, spots in this room, again, you're going to have multiple sound sources coming from different directions and going to the ear. And there's something that's called speech intelligibility that gets lost. You're going to get lots of volume, but you're not going to understand what somebody is saying. Uh, so uh, if, if there's a central location, you will probably mount the horns maybe to go that way. You can go three or four horns. Uh, so the sound is coming from one central location. Or you can have um, something like this. You could, uh, you, could, uh, you could distribute those like that. Or sometimes you can have one bigger horn in one of the corners that services the whole, uh, the whole area. Uh, I would prefer this or that, because sometimes this here, uh, in this situation, some of the sound propagation doesn't get into all the corners there. But uh, if you have something like that, that's the best. Uh, or you can have something like this, that's also good. Or you can have something like this. You can, uh, you can distribute the sound. Um, if you need more volume, put more speakers, but put them beside each other. So, um, so in, um, uh, if you have that close, that's also, if those speakers or the horns are close to each other, that is also considered a single sound source because they are close to each other. So it's called some, uh, the, the name for that type of configuration, it's called exploded cluster. Right? Exploded cluster. Exploded cluster or just cluster. So this would be clustering. Okay. Now, if you have, if you want to do exploded cluster, you will have a line here. Oh, yeah. You will have something like this, and this is how you would mount the speakers. 
So this would be just a cluster right here. And this would be the exploded cluster configuration. You want to minimize the positioning of the sound sources in a room if you want to, uh, if you want to have um, good sound distribution. And that has to do with something that's called the sound or speech intelligibility for spoken word. Also work with music. You can actually hear the music playing instead of uh, having a lot of noise and not uh, picking up the single instruments and so on. All right, let's keep going. This is the step down transformer that is, uh, that, that, uh, is mounted on the speaker. And as you can see over here, you have the wires. So you're going to have one, wire, uh, one set of wires that are coming out of the transformer. Uh, out of the transformer, let's say this box is a transformer. You're going to have one set of wires that is going to be able uh, labeled uh, eight ohms. Okay, and over here, uh, you're going to have a bunch of wires sticking out of that thing. One of them is going to be common. So you're always going to use the common. And over here, you're going to have labels, uh, let's say quarter, quarter watt, half watt, oops, half, one half watt, uh, maybe uh, one watt, and maybe two watts, something like that. So depending on how loud you want that, you would just connect um, to the main, so this goes to the speaker, that goes right to the speaker, uh, to the eight ohms section, and over here you have a common, let's say this is the main line, coming out of the amplifier that's coming out from the amp from there so this is the one line this is the output of the amplifier and you would connect the common to the common and let's say you would choose one of those uh, and uh, let's say you want to tap the, that speaker at one watt you would just choose that and connect that to the hot one very simple and the other ones all the other ones you just blind them you just uh, just cut them off, but don't leave them hanging as far as the copper sticking out of them because they can touch each other, they can touch other things. So that's basically what we're going to connect. Bunch of speakers in the lab, in our lab. Okay, I always like my board clear. Okay, keep going with this. So that's the, uh, that would be the representation of that. Let's say black, you see common here. And it actually, this one has a label. Red wire, you would tap at 10 watts. Blue wire would tap at five watts and so on. If you want to tap at one, this one doesn't have one. So this is 1.25 watts, that's close enough. So if you want to tap things at one watt, you would go uh, to the line. Uh, to the main line, the main feed, the main bass line, uh, it would go black as common and yellow for the one watt. So that would be considered a speaker stop at one watt. Sometimes you're going to see transformers looking like this and you're going to have something that's called spade connectors. Uh, so sometimes they are provided in a bag or sometimes you just have to provide your own. You can use the uh, spade connectors uh, to, uh, to connect the, the, those just slide in, the, the, those spade connectors slide onto those terminals. Or sometimes you can just solder them on. Uh, the best way is to solder them on because then you have a sure connection. But if you uh, sometimes if you want to connect uh, the sp using the spade connectors, it's just fine too. But sometimes uh, just just get ready for it. Uh, sometimes after a while, those connections become oxidized or dirty, or maybe uh, uh, some kind of a residue is happening on some of those contacts. And if that kicks in, you might want you might have uh, some. Um, um, some troubles with connections on that all right volume control uh, works uh, do i have that yeah okay volume control works very simple uh, in the volume control usually you would have a transformer on this side it's a it's a basically that's a transformer and you 
you just do the tapping on that uh, before you do the tapping on the speaker. So you would tap the speaker at a certain level, and before that, between the main line and the speaker, you would connect a volume control, which is also a transformer. So this goes to the main line, just taps into it, and that goes to the speaker, and the way you click, you choose the, you, you set the volume on the speakers, you just click between the settings on the transformer. So that's the volume control. You can't have just a regular some uh, resistor uh, or sometimes they call L pads. Uh, try to avoid L pads. Um, L pad. I'm not going to explain what L pad is, uh, but that's. That's what it looks. Sometimes people use L pads for volume control. Basically, an L pad has two resistors on uh, on one side, on one side, on the other side. And as you turn the volume, one resistor goes up, the other resistor goes down, just to match the impedance. Uh, now, L pads uh, you can use. Uh, you, no, I'm not going to explain in details of how they work. You can Google that if you wish. Uh, but um, I would suggest not using those in a commercial application simply because the resistors, uh, it's just like a pot, uh, you know, it just touches the, the, the sliding bar on it. Uh, they do heat up and actually LPAT in a commercial environment, if it's, if it's just like a little tiny radio uh, system or something at home that you're doing that's very, very low power, and I mean like, you know, one or two watts, five watts maybe, uh, then you can uh, you can use LPAD just as a hobby or or or, or small type of but in, in environment. But in the industrial environment, please do not use LPADs. They can heat up and they can actually start the fire. If you see one of those, I encourage you to to Google this what LPAD is. If you see one of those, uh, just uh, tell the customer that uh, you would like to replace that because of the safety reasons. And you're going to see some of the old installations. Somebody who know who thinks that they know something, um, they will install some of those. Right? Uh, okay. How does the how does the volume control work? Well, again, if there is a main line, this is a wire. Uh, this is from the amplifier. That's where the amplifier is. Uh, and this would be the main speaker line. So you will have speaker stations connected, and I'm not going to draw the transformers here. I'm just going to draw the speakers. It's understood that those things are connected to the transformers. Yeah. And let's say there's, a, there's a, a room that you want to use the volume control. So you would just tap into it as if you were normally. But instead of connecting it into the speaker, you connect that to the volume control, to the input side of it. And from the output side of it, you would connect that to the speaker. Now this speaker also has the step down transformer. Um, <clears throat> so you set it to certain level. And then you use the volume control to control only that speaker. So if you see everything is connected, so if you if you set this, if you tap this speaker at different wattage, this one is not going to be affected, and all everything else. If you control the volume uh, on, on just that as assigned to the that is assigned just to that speaker, if you control this volume, it's not going to affect all the other speakers. Just that. So that's. Uh, that's how the volume control works on a constant voltage system. Where are these things being used? Um, well, school PA systems, uh, large environment, uh, uh, commercial environment, factories, plants, offices as well. And uh, usually in the offices and the commercial environment, uh, the amplifier is connected to the speakers. And where is the input of the amplifier connected to? Where is it getting the signal from? Usually from the phone system. Okay, we're going to go over that too in the next lectures. Uh, so the source would be not a CD player or DVD player or whatnot, 
uh, it would be actually an output of the phone system. So you can pick up the handset on the phone system, dial the feature number or press a button that says page, and then sometimes you can select different zones. Uh, and that's how you control the PA system from the phone system. All right, so again, in this uh, situation here, you would have uh, amplifier coming in, or not amplifier, but, well, yeah, that would be the main line coming in. And quite often these are labeled. Try to remember the polarity. Polarity is important. If you reverse the polarity on a speaker, is it going to work? Yes, it's going to work, but uh, if you have other speakers that are in the different polarity, if you have plus and minus, minus plus, it's going to sound weird, annoying. Uh, constant voltage system. Now, uh, use, uh, when, you, when you install in, in, in commercial environment, if you're installing those, just make sure that the boxes can actually fit the volume controls because the volume controls are usually bulky things. Oh. Yeah. This is what the speaker station looks like. This would be the two wires connected right to the speaker. And these would be the, um, the wires that are connecting to the line. We talked about that. And you can, you can view this as you download the posted lecture notes. Um, what did I say here? In a commercial environment, most ceiling speaker stations are installed within the drop ceiling tiles. That's what the drop ceiling tiles look like. And uh, as a word of advice, if I can give you, if you ever build a house or office or anything like that, um, in the office, uh, try not to install drywall ceiling because you're always going to have to add wires and modify things. Technology advances and there's always new something new comes up or you might want to change something. And if you have a drywall uh, ceiling, you're going to have a hard time uh, adding some uh, connections. If you have a ceiling, if you have ceiling tiles like this, uh, you just pop the ceiling tile and install the, uh, install the devices and run the wires. Also, if you have, uh, if you, uh, you know, in the future, you're going to get uh, houses, you, you buy a house. In the basement, try to have that type of a ceiling, uh, drop ceiling. There are some beautiful, beautiful tiles, uh, decor type of tiles, as opposed to the, just a regular bread and butter commercial uh, thing. Um, then uh, and you can have the ceiling looking really, really nice in your house. Plus, it's actually the sound is better in the basement because they do dampen the sound. Uh, so it does sound better when you talk to each other in the, in, in the basement of the house. Um, uh, and, um, um, and when you have that type of ceiling, you can just pop the tiles and you have access to the, to the floor above. Uh, so you can run security wires. Later on, you can run, uh, you can run uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, automation, home automation systems, uh, thermostats and whatnot. New technology comes up on the market, uh, no problem installing it. Uh, plus you have access to all the plumbing and stuff. I always give that advice to people. Okay. So what does, what do they say here? Ceiling tiles are made of the soft material. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, and are not designed to hold devices such as speakers. Use mounting brackets that attach to the support grid. So here's the support grid. And that's where the ceiling tiles. The support grid is meant to just hold the ceiling tiles in place. Do not mount devices directly on the ceiling tiles that are not supported by anything else. This would be the bracket. So this part of the bracket, see those corners here? They rest on the support rails of the whole ceiling, just like here. And that would, that's what's supporting the, whatever the device is. You could have speakers, you could have pot lights, you can have whatever else. This way, you are sure that this thing is not going to fall down on your head, that's one, uh, or it's going, not going to bulge. Uh, sometimes it looks ugly, especially when you do some uh, job for somebody that you get paid for. And you would hate somebody to call you six months down the road saying that uh, the devices are, um, 
kind of sagging from the ceiling. Now, if it's just a little tiny um, um, device, like for example, the calculator size here, uh, or maybe even smaller, just a tiny little light thing such as uh, security motion sensor or glass break detector, which is really light, yes, you can mount that directly on the ceiling. You don't need the heavy things, but you know what I mean when, when it comes to. Speakers are heavy uh, and they will sag. Okay. All right, so this is the end of this part. Uh, uh, now let me queue up the second part of the, uh, of the PA system. PA system part two. Okay. Now, um, public PA system or uh, public address PA systems, uh, they are not just the speakers that you mount in McDonald's or KFC to play the background music or in the schools or in, 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 in factories. Um, they're also, the PA systems also come in, uh, uh, this is the stage. Uh, this is the stage gear, or the stage setup, or live stage setup. Uh, you could have smaller venue, maybe 200 people, you don't need some, anything like that. But this is an example of a huge stage uh, that actually some construction knowledge is required. Um, so this stage, um, after it is set up, it looks like this, okay? So from that, in the data, so sometimes it takes about them, you know, two weeks, couple of weeks for them, uh, for, for the construction crews to set it up. And when the event happens, uh, it might actually look like something like this. Okay? And then after the, after the whole thing is done, uh, they tear it down. It takes about a week as well. Okay? Now, uh, I'm just going to, oh, well, let me just bring in a full view here. So a little bit better, just to see it, things better. Full screen mode, okay. How are we doing with time? We're doing okay. So that's a live performance, typical stage setup. Now the live performance setup uh, used to be just an analog, which would be something like this. Okay? Or sometimes uh, there's a digital setup, which also looks like that, but it's uh, the, the wiring is slightly different. Uh, you're using a lot less wiring because instead of running, uh, let's say, uh, 16 channel, so if you have a 16 channel snake going from the mixing board uh, onto the stage breakout box, then you would have to have 16 wires in that snake, and those snakes get, uh, get thick. Um, it, it's been done, it's, it's one of the best setups, but sometimes when you get the digital setup, you just have one CAT5E cable, a uh, computer cable, um, just the one that you connect your computer to your internet, uh, and, and that serves all 16 channels and just a tiny bit of a wire. The problem is that if uh, when there's analog system, when one wire goes bad, you get some sort of a noise or it just doesn't work. Uh, you have uh, 15 other channels. Maybe if you have some free channels, you, you're just going to switch the, cha the channels and you're still in business. But if uh, in the digital system, if that one wire that connects the mixing board to the breakout box, if that something happens to that one wire, everything goes down. And uh, let me tell you, if there is a break in line in the analog system, um, you may hear some annoying buzz or some uh, uh, some noise, and that's about it. Sometimes you get a big crackle and pop, but um, um, but when the digital system goes down, it sounds like the skies are falling. All right, so typical stage live performance setup. <laughs> you know, we're not going to. Uh, well, you're not going to have a lot of those uh, this time. Hopefully the COVID situation is going to um, pass as soon as possible so people can enjoy going to concerts and have live venues. It will come, all right? So don't worry, it's, uh, those times are coming back. It's just not yet. And when, I wish I knew. <clears throat> so this... Uh, Typical system as, a start, as far as the live performance. Here's a big mixing board that you can connect the effects to. And here are the input channels. 
and this would be on the stage. This one shows us a stage box. And as I said, if you're dealing with an analog system, then you would have, if this is a 16 channel uh, breakout box or a stage box, you would have 16 wires, signal wires going in there. If this is a digital stage box, you would have a digital output from the mixing board and you would get one Cat5 E wire or maybe sometimes two. So those are, these are called digital snakes or analog snakes. So this part that goes from mixing board onto the stage box, it's called a snake, just like a snake, like Cobra or Python. Right? Now from the stage box, uh, well, the thing is, can you run wires, individual wires from instruments like a guitar or a microphone or things like that um, straight into the mixing board? Yes, you can, but you would have a lot of wires to run. So that's why snakes are being used. Snakes are compacted, many wires or digital wire. Uh, and it, you just do one run, nice and clean, no tripping hazard if you install it properly. Um, and, uh, and, and you can just basically, just so you can get those inputs to the mixing board, you can bring them here. Also, you would get outputs of the mixing board and you would connect them to the uh, stage box. Uh, so you could run your amplifiers on the stage. Now, one thing I'm going to point out to you is that when you're running amplification system, uh, so, so this, this mixing board here, just the signal processing here happening. Yeah. There are speaker, there are mixing boards, that are so-called powered mixing boards that you have amplifier built inside and you can run the wire, speaker wires straight from the mixing board. It's been done, but it's usually done for smaller venues if you don't have long distances to run. But let's say this thing here, this mixing board can be right in the public seats. So you would have 100 feet from the stage uh, in the comfortable spot. So you can mix down the whole rock and roll band or a theater event or whatever it is. Uh, usually you would, you would have that in the public, situated in the public, okay? So then you would have 100 feet of speaker wire now, let's say the signal wire, the impedance, the usual impedance is, uh, let's say, 600 ohms. That would be a, that would be a quite common impedance on the signal wire. So 600, 600 ohms, and if you have 100 feet of that signal wire, um, then you might get maybe uh, for over 100 feet, maybe that wire is going to have just the resistance of those wires are going to give you maybe two ohms three ohms maybe four ohms or something so if you compare the three ohms or four ohms to 600 ohms that resistance of the wire is not that very significant but if you have a thicker speak even if you have a thicker speaker wire if you run it 100 feet from the from the front of the house that's what it's called if you run that to the stage where the speakers are, and the speakers are, let's say, four ohms, because you will have uh, four ohms would be higher power system or eight ohms. So if those wires are going to give you, let's say, because they're a thicker wire, uh, let's say they're going to give you two ohms uh, of resistance, just the wire resistance. Two ohms compared to eight ohms or four ohms, that's a lot. You, you would get a lot of signal being lost in the wire. So it's not a very efficient system. So that's why when you, um, uh, when you install the uh, live performance system, you would have the mixing board or the front of the house equipment signaling, signal routing with high impedance. You will have it somewhere at the, in the public seats, 100 feet away from the stage, and you will have the amplifiers right on the stage. So the wire distance from the amplifier to the speaker is as short as possible. So, uh, so that's the reason why you have the amplifiers in the backstage or maybe underneath the stage and very close to the speaker. And from that, you would run, uh, you would run the signal from the mixing board into the amplifier. So you, you would run a signal. So you would have, let's say, 16 channels and four returns. The returns mean, uh, so you have this from the stage box, box 
uh, sorry, you would have 16 channels and let's say four returns. So the direction of the signal from the stage goes this way from the stage to the mixing board and the direction of the return channels goes from the mixing board into the stage box, but they're also signal wires. They are not power. Uh, they are not um, uh, high power as said, in the stage setup. High power will be a sp speaker uh, speaker signal. Uh, so these will be still these will be still signal wires, but they would the direction from that would be going this way here, and there will be outputs. So in some part of the box we would have inputs. And some part of the stage box, you would have outputs and you would run the signal from the mixing board into the amplifier, see here, into the amplifier and maybe some crossovers or whatever. Uh, and then it goes to the, uh, to, the, um, to the speakers or should I say loudspeakers. And also monitors. So this would be the stage speakers, uh, quite often the bass, and the mids and highs, so the, there will be low frequencies and the mid high and high frequencies. Sometimes they are separated just for the efficiency purposes. Um, and also you have something that's called a um, monitor. A monitor is a speaker that is at the stage pointing at the performer so they can hear the music that they're supposed to sing to or you would have actually a separate mix onto the, it's called monitor mix. You would have uh, that uh, shooting at, right at, to the, at the performance. So this would be something that's called stage monitors. Sometimes uh, what you get is something that's called in-ear monitors, like going inside your ear. So they, are the, they look like hearing aids. Uh, so in this case, um, uh, it is in many cases, you abandon the stage monitor system because people would go with the in-ear monitors and there's a completely separate mix going into those. There is a person, live person, that's doing a mixing that goes to the public and the signal, every, all the sig all signals from the stage are being split, it's called a split snake, uh, or split signal. It goes uh, to the other mixing board and there's another group of people or a person just doing the mix just for the artist and some artists want to say, I want to have more piano in my ears and less bass guitar uh, or so on. So there are they're, they're, they're separate mixes. Sometimes uh, you have combination of both. Was the music industry arts in our college? Uh, you can, uh, if you're interested in that, uh, you can sign up for the music industry arts as well. And there's a garbage truck outside. Okay, uh, we have a few more minutes. We can uh, we can uh, we can keep going with this. How does the mixing board work? Analog or digital? This is analog. Uh, I'm going to show you the analog. Digital works basically. It's, it's simulating the analog mixing board except things are just a little bit more compact and you can call up screens instead of touching the real knobs. Uh, so um, uh, let's just take a look at the, at the, this is a, well, you can buy a little mixing board. So we have two, uh, two microphone channels, maybe two, uh, two line level ch uh, channels um, coming in. Uh, so it's like a four channel mixing board. You can pretty much get this thing at local store. PA shop here is one. Uh, there's some other music stores around, around London uh, or on Amazon. You can get uh, or whatever else. Uh, you can uh, you can pick this up pretty much for about less than two hundred dollars. So this is a smaller version. You concentrate on one channel. So what here? What do we have here? We have something that's called a XLR, and we're going to um, uh, uh, talk about that later. What X, what XLR is, but this is basically used for professional microphone signal, or you can connect that line level signal, let's say from a keyboard or something. So, uh, so uh, microphone level would have uh, about one millivolt peak to peak, and uh, line level signal would probably have some like one volt 
peak to peak. And then you have something that's called gain control. That's the first level of amplification or like a preamp, pre-amplifier. Uh, so um, depending on what type, what type of uh, um, source you have, you might want to bump up the signal or you might want to not uh, have the signal coming not as strong. So that's, that's, the, that's probably the most sensitive uh, control right here. Uh, you adjust that to a comfortable level so you can use the channel volume uh, to, uh, to, uh, to adjust the volume as you're mixing live. So this here sets the range. It's just like a range on the multimeter. And over here is, uh, so you can just, uh, you can, you can, um... <laughs> we got mail. <laughs> you got mail. That's the sound of you have mail. <laughs> All right. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so you set this thing up to comfortable level so you can comfortably adjust the regular volume of just for this channel. And usually you would have uh, some equalization happening. So this one has um, uh, high and low. That's it. It doesn't have mids. All right. That's okay. Uh, and there's an auxiliary input uh, here. And over here you have, uh, I don't even know what this one is, um, effects. So it's another input. Yeah, okay. It says effects on it. So somewhere, if I see auxiliary, I'm going to look for auxiliary input somewhere here, okay? or maybe at the front. And if you have FX, I'm going to look for FX input somewhere here. Okay, so you can uh, you can insert things um, into the. Uh, okay, so this is output. Sorry, this is the output. You can send that. See, okay, it's been a while. You can send this to the auxiliary output. So you can have main output coming out of this, or you can have auxiliary output coming out of this. So you can control how much of the sound goes to the main stage mix, and how much of the signal goes to, let's say, stage monitors. Or you can have left and right um, also. Because this one, I don't see, sometimes you have balance, but uh, usually in this one here, I don't see it. You can send this channel to left, this this channel to the left out main output channel or to the right output channel this one does that and here's the main volume control just for this strip this strip just goes the same as that this one is a little bit different it doesn't have the microphone inputs it has left and right inputs um, and it also has gain a little bit eq and same as the other ones uh, this seems like it's a main equalizer you can uh, you can set uh, for the main channel main output channel you can set up um, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can equalize things uh, a little bit better. Quite uh, for, for the most optimal sound, uh, or maybe to reduce feedback and whatnot. Tape, uh, in, in previous uh, classes, previous years, uh, I can see one that says tape in and tape out. And people say, what does that mean, tape? Well, um, <laughs> in the good old days, uh, you used to have something that's called a tape recorders and sometimes there would be the reel to reel tape recorders if you ever watched pulp fiction in one of the scenes uh when mr john travolta goes uh, um, um to somebody's house and in as part of the furniture you could see a big uh player uh music player audio player that has reels so there'll be a tape on it and sometimes later on you would have the tape decks you would, you would just have the uh, cassette uh, cassette players and it's just the terminology just stayed that way okay? but uh, can you connect uh, mp3 player to that yes all right but it's not going to see mp3 player it's going to say tape in or tape out so you that'll be the input for that device whatever it is or you can just send it out uh, for whatever reason you might want to. Headphone output, self-explanatory. The output section of that, um, or sometimes, okay, so uh, I just, these are the magnifications of what I just uh, explained to you. So I'm not going to, exp uh, if you have any questions, just send me an email. Um, or if you, um, sometimes <clears throat> if you're, interested in setting audio for live performance 
uh, talk to me. I can set you up with things as well. Uh, these here are, you see, this is the main mixing board. And what I did is I just cut and paste uh, in Photoshop different sections of that. So I was just explaining this. Um, now, here's a big mixing board. Big mixing board is nothing else as this, except it has more channels. This is a 48 mixing, uh, uh, 48 channel mixing board. It's an analog mixing board. Now, the digital mixing board works pretty much the same way, except it's more efficient because you would have a smaller package, manageable, so you can actually carry it one person under your arm. Um, and the inputs are digital, so you, you don't have those inputs, you just have an output for a digital snake and you have a stage box that has many of those there. So you plug those in and if you want to switch between different channels, so let's say over here in the analog, you have instant access, physical access to all the channels. You can control all the channels. But if you have digital mixing board, you would have a smaller version of that and you have screens. So let's say you, you would switch. You, I want to control channel one through six or one through four or one through eight. And you will have a, on the window, you will have same knobs, but these knobs will be channel one, two, three, four, five, six. And what if you can, want to control channels uh, eight to 12, you would press a button and the whole thing would just shift. And these same knobs would control channels eight to 12 or, or, or so on. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mouthful. Of course, uh, just by, just by me showing you this, uh, you're not going to become an expert on uh, sending audio, but now you have, uh, you have a pretty good idea of, of uh, how to uh, how to set things uh, how to set things up. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is five minutes till the end of the class. So, if you have other classes to go to, by all means, uh, just uh, log out and leave if you need to. Uh, but I'm going to keep going, and after I post this thing on YouTube, you can revisit that and you can just watch the uh, the, the final uh, few minutes of of whatever it is, uh, because uh, I think we're running out of time. Okay, so. Uh, so I'm just going to keep going, and if you need to log out, uh, just just go ahead. Okay. I'm going to post this uh, recorded uh, session right uh, as a part of the playlist. Oh, labs, you just uh, come in today, and bring same as you as last time. You just bring your side cutters, and you bring the tape that I gave you. <laughs> and of course, PPE, safety glasses, and you need a face mask. All right, so I'm gonna keep going and you can visit that later if you want. All right, uh, now this is an example of a digital mixing board. As just as I said, you have a common set of uh, uh, control knobs and here is a screen uh, that you will see the channel. So what you wanna control with different, uh, with different controls here. Uh, I think this one, uh, it's, uh, it's the Yamaha CL5. Uh, well, I'm not gonna call, tell you how much it costs, but uh, you can buy a pretty good car uh, for that. But this is a serious equipment here. And if you want, uh, after you download this, you can you watch the YouTube videos on how this thing is being used, or you can investigate further. Quite often in the small venues, you would have, instead of using snakes, you would have wireless control. Some of the mixing boards are basically on tablets. As you can see, sometimes there's a touch screen you can, uh, you can use. Um, uh, and, uh, and you see, there's no much wires going on because things are being controlled wirelessly. That's how far the technology has gone. The only thing is that with every new piece of equipment that is the, of the new generation, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve, uh, so you're going to have to learn how to use that, but much more convenient. So uh, there's no, not much of a snake going on here. Sometimes there is, uh, but uh, quite often you get, uh, you get the main equipment uh, set up on the stage. And over here, you just have the controls over that. So you wirelessly control the devices that are on the stage. Microphones, uh, I'm going to continue with the microphones. 
this is um, well and you know some people might argue with me but I don't care <laughs> I don't care <laughs> Uh, this is the best microphone in the world as far as uh, the stage performance. Uh, it's called Shure SM58. And you can click on the YouTube video, a YouTube link uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to find out what this microphone is about. Also, what I have done is uh, once you download the PDF version, you can click on this and you can see the comparison of different microphones and how they work and what they're being used for. Balanced and unbalanced signal. Uh, I'm going to um, show you the difference between, and that's going to be on the test. Balance, the difference between balanced and unbalanced signal. Balanced signal has a hot wire, sorry, unbalanced. This is unbalanced. That's unbalanced signal. It's going to have a hot wire, which is a signal, and it's going to have the reference wire. So the reference is mostly connected to ground. And whichever direction it goes, let's say this is a, um, let's say it goes this way here, from a keyboard to a mixing, um, mixing board. This line here is going to have a signal. That's a waveform. Right on that. Okay. And this is just as a reference. It's okay to use unbalanced signals if the signal is strong, because if you have a noise, you're just going to have a little tiny bit of a noise on that, and quite often it just becomes um, so small in comparison to the strong line level signal, which would be something like, like one volt peak to peak, peak to peak. And I usually put my units in square brackets and this is supposed to be one so that would be a line level signal would be one volt peak to peak uh, you can run that 100 feet 50 feet is comfortable 100 feet is still you can still um, use that wait for the phone to stop ringing okay um, now, when you have a longer distance, like a, for example, a hundred feet of a microphone signal, mic level signal, mic level signal would be microphone level. It would be something like one millivolt peak to peak. Well, if you have that and there is any noise in the line, one millivolt is going to actually be comparable to the signal, so you're not going to have a clear signal coming in. So, what somebody has invented was something that is called a balanced line. Balanced line is like this. Uh, I'm going to go on the other side here. Turn the lights off. I'm going to show the balanced line. So, balanced line would have a ground level will be the neutral and it would have the negative side and you would have the positive side to it so now when signal travels down the line it is 180 degrees out of phase so the signal from the microphone like an ice cream cone. This is a microphone. Okay? Uh, now, from the microphone, it has the three prongs, XLR. Okay? Now, when... Um, I'm just going to wait. Hello. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, the, the, the signal goes this way here. 
and it goes 180 degrees out of phase. All right, so what does that give us? Well, on the other side, it's something differential amplifier. Differential amplifier. Differential amplifier needs to see two inputs out of phase. If the signal is coming into the input of the differential amplifier, then you're go the signal is going to acknowledge, the amplifier is going to acknowledge it as signal and it's going to pass through and it's going to make a sound on the other end. If the signal is in phase, it's going to ignore it. So let's say if you have a noise on both lines, which noise would be in phase, that would be ignored. So let's say there's a spike and here. Those two spikes are in phase, they're going to be ignored. If there is any noise along the line here, it is going to be in phase, it's going to be ignored. So the XR, uh, XLR, um, uh, the balanced line is way more efficient and it can, you can transfer low level signal over longer distances. That's for the microphones. So uh, I just explained to you what balanced and unbalanced, the difference with this between the unbalanced and unbalanced signal. Uh, and you can, you know what, you can do this at home. You can identify different parts of the, um, of the components of the, um, let's say here, uh, which is basically the same, uh, same, sin, uh, same system. And you can just look at that again and see if you see anything different than you looked at it when you saw it the first time I saw you. Okay, so this concludes today's lesson. Uh, on the PA systems, uh, it took a little bit longer, but I wanted to explain things to you in more detail. Uh, now, we were supposed to, week three, we were supposed to start uh, talking about the pods, which is the um, plain old telephone service, but we're going to tackle that thing uh, next time we see each other. Okay. In the meantime, uh, get ready for your labs, whoever is coming. Uh, um, Today is section 1A lab coming in. Bring your side cutters, bring your tape, bring your cells and your PPE, safety glasses and face covering mask. This concludes today's lesson. Thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you when I see you.